All right, so in problem 76, we have the function f shown here. And we want to figure out which of these are true. So we have a comparison of the derivatives. So remember, derivatives um, basically tell you the slope of the tangent line at specific points. So let's just draw sketches of what the tangent lines would be at negative 2, 0, and 3. So like negative 2, we have like a tangent line like that. So the slope would be positive. At zero, it looks like a horizontal tangent line, so the slope would be zero. And at three, the tangent line is sloped downwards, so we have a negative slope. Okay, so f prime of negative two, is that less? This is not going to be less than either of them. F, f prime of negative two is going to be the biggest, so it's definitely not a. f prime of negative two, nope, so we know it's not that, because f prime of negative two is the largest of all of these. But f prime of three, is that less than? f prime of negative two it is, but um, f prime of zero, or f prime of negative two, let's see, this one has to be positive, the negative, positive, zero. So these may be swapped. Remember, this is, this is, um, this is positive and that's zero. So f prime of f prime of three negative, f prime of zero is zero, and f prime of negative two positive. Okay, so the answer would be D. Twenty seven. Let large h of x a large h of x be an antiderivative of this expression here. And it says if large h of 5 is pi, then large h of 2 is. OK, so if this is an antiderivative, then we can set up an integral with this. So we can write have an integral of x cubed plus sine of x over x squared plus 2. Remember, if this is the antiderivative of this. That means when you integrate this, you're gonna get you're gonna get large h of x. So let's look at the points two and five. Let's integrate this from two to five because that looks like what we have to compare. So integrating this, this would be equal to large h of five minus large h of two. I'm just gonna say h of two and h of five. So same large as me. Retiring. Anyways. So um, we have that h of 5 is pi, so pi minus h of 2. And we can integrate this with our calculated technology. So we have this. Okay, like this earlier, let me just do it again in case you need a of pointers on how you do this. So I'm going to go to my, go to menu, calculus, set up my numerical integral from two to five. Open parentheses, x cubed plus sine of x. Divided by x squared plus 2. I'm not sure any mistakes. Looks good. And let's see what we have. Nine, but yeah, 9.00825. All that thing. 9.00825700344. Okay, so from this, we just subtract pi. And we'll get positive five eight six six six. So since this, is, this will be negative h of two, will be positive five point six 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 ish. So then, so then the answer will be negative this number. It'll be oops five point eight six. So the answer will be b.
Right, so eight, the continuous function f is positive and has domain x is greater than zero. The absolute test of the graph are the absolute test of the graph of f are x equals zero and y equals two, which the following statements must be true. Okay, let's just draw a sketch of what this may look like. So we have asymptotes. Y equals two. Maybe something like that. And then X equals zero, so that Y axis. And it says that F is gonna be positive. So it's gonna be above the X axis. So the only way that would make sense is if it's on this side. And also the domain is x greater than zero. So the graph of f is gonna look something like this. And so then as x goes to infinity, f of x goes to two. And as x goes to zero, f of x goes to infinity. So let's see which of these match up. They're approaching zero from the positive side. You're coming from this direction, right? Well, in this direction means you can approach zero from the positive side. So that would be, so that that's okay. So limit as x goes to zero, that would go to infinity, yeah. And then when x goes to two, okay, that's not, we don't want x going to two, we want x going to infinity. Because the asymptote y equals two, so it's not a. The first part works. So yeah, so we want to go as x goes to infinity, but it says the limit, or it says the aspect of it is two. So it should be approaching two. This should be a two. So it's not going to be b. First part is correct again. The limit as x goes to infinity, we x goes to zero from the positive side of f of x goes to infinity. And the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals two. So that's what we want to answer C. It's 79. The file is downloaded to the computer at a rate modeled by a differentiable function, f of t, where t is the time in seconds since the start of the download, and f of t is measured in megabits per second. Which of the following is the best interpretation of f prime of 5 equals to 2.8? Okay, so let's read this carefully because it says that the rate is modeled by the different modeled by this differential function. So the, the function the, the function f of t rate itself is a rate or it's like a derivative, you could say. So then if we're taking the derivative of f of t, we're basically taking the derivative of the derivative or the rate of the rate. So we're gonna be looking for like a description that describes how the rate is changing at five seconds. So, so for a at time t equals five seconds of rate at which the file is. Yeah, so this is this would be only f of t. f prime of t would be like the rate of the rate. So it's not going to be a at time t equals five seconds, the rate at which the file is downloaded. The computer is increasing at a rate of 2.8 megabits per second per second. Yes, yeah, so and the answer would be a, or the answer would be b. They're talking about again, it's talking about the rate of the rate. And yeah, C and D won't be it. All right, 80. The function f has first derivative given by f prime of x equal to x to the fourth minus 6x squared minus 8x minus 3. And what intervals is the graph of f concave up? So let's just go ahead and graph this guy. We get a visual. All right, so using technology, here's my graph of f prime. So this is f prime, this is not f. So it would be concave up, concave up when f prime is greater, is when f prime, not when f prime is greater than zero, but when f prime is, um, is increasing. f prime has to be increasing. So it just has to be getting bigger. It doesn't have to be always, doesn't have to be positive necessarily. It just has to be, you know, going up. 
So we want to look at the graph and find where it starts to go up, right? When it's where it starts to increase. So oh, on the left, it's decreasing, decreasing. And you can probably see it's going to be right by that. So let's um, let's change our window here. Okay, so it looks like right there is a minimum. It's increasing from that point to the to infinity. It looks like it'll be from two to infinity. But you can always look and find the minimum. I'm not confident. Now be at two. The minimum there is at two. So it's going to be increasing from two to infinity. And so it's going to concave up from two to infinity. Remember the Second derivative or the concavity describes the second derivative. And second derivative is positive from two to infinity, meaning the first derivative is increasing. All right, so I hope that helps.